I agree. Before we swap them out on the break, though, to make sure that we have it. Yeah, yeah, we, we need to make it. That seems cheap to me, but that's, that's good, yeah. Okay, I believe it's 6 o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a two-part meeting tonight. Actually, the first part is a public hearing, and the public hearing is uh, on a proposed ordinance amendment, Chapter 33 of nu uh, Nuisances, uh, Article 5, Noise Control, uh, regarding construction and repair of buildings and so forth and the times that they can operate. Uh, would, would ask our uh, community development director to come up and kind of give us a brief synopsis of actually what this does. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, council members. This is a proposed uh, amendment to the uh, Code of Ordinances of the City of Canton. Uh, currently, uh, the construction work hours are specified at 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. City Council asked staff to look into uh, uh, what other communities are doing relative to construction hours and what uh, the staff has come up with as a proposal for consideration is that uh, work hours associated with residential work would be 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. Uh, within 500 feet of residential zones, within 1,500 feet of occupied residences. A new subdivision going in with the infrastructure uh, taking place and putting roads in would require a notification letter uh, go out to the properties within 500 feet of the uh, project property two weeks prior to the beginning of that construction. For commercial work, the hours uh, would be 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. within 500 feet of residential zones, within 1,500 feet of occupied residences. Any construction work would require a notification letter, uh, go out to property owners uh, within 500 feet of uh, the project property two weeks prior to the beginning of that construction. This proposal also would allow construction work on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. It does uh, institute an after hours work permit process that would come before city council for approval and there would be a fee schedule associated with those uh, work hours. There is a list of uh, city holidays uh, that uh, would uh, be exclude construction work as well. 
Okay. So those are the major changes. All right, the, count, the council will have an opportunity to raise any questions or uh, discuss the matter during the council meeting, but at this point we would uh, entertain any uh, questions or public input or anyone that would like to make any comments regarding that uh, ordinance. Okay, if not, we will, wait, 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 you'll have an opportunity when we get to the, okay. to the, the uh, meeting, okay? Because Ken will be back up here at that point. But for now, we just want to hear from anybody in the public that would uh, have a comment. If not, we'll close the public uh, portion of this uh, uh, public hearing, and we will now uh, call the meeting to order for our regular council meeting work session. And this is March 3rd, 2016. And if you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. Dear Lord, during this presidential election year, please give us the wisdom to see through what is not true to be able to make decisions based upon truth. We are the greatest and most powerful one country in the known history of our world. Electing and re-electing our leaders is extremely important. Please help us choose wisely. In your name we pray. I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. Uh, first item, uh, our fire marshal, I believe. Uh, who's going to handle the uh, uh, memory of, of charity? Oh, Chief, you're going to do that. Okay. Good evening, Mayor Council. Roger. We got charity back in June of 2007 and she actually retired June of 2015. During her eight years with the city of Canton, she went to different schools, events, not only inside the city of Canton, but she also went outside into Cherokee County, even traveled as far as to Pickens County. <coughs> she actually had play dates with other Dalmatians from the fire service from Smyrna and other agencies, so she was a very well-loved dog. Well, February 11th of this year, uh, due to health reasons, she was put down. And uh, what we'd like to do is give, Roger was her handler, and over the eight years, they've done thousands and thousands of kids in public safety education. Uh, I think the smallest year they had, they touched over 2,000 people that year. Charity was a rescue dog from the city of Canton. She was actually rescued right here in our own city, and she was donated to us. Uh, Animal Medical Surgical Center here in Canton done all the vet work for her for free. We had uh, all of her training was donated for free and all of her food was donated for free. So she was a very, very important part of our family at the fire station. So with that said, I'd like to give this to Mr. Ross. Thank you very, very close and right. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay, Chief, you can handle the next one. Mayor, Council, thank you. If I could have uh, Solicitor's Office Investigator Jerry Jordan step down in front with me. As a fire department, um, the police department in our community lost a very important um, Canine that was a uh, uh, served our our agency in the community from 2004 to 2012. Canine Faro and the handler uh, for Canine Faro was uh, Investigator Jared Jordan. He used to work. He worked for the uh, police department during those eight years and was the uh, the handler for uh, Canine Faro. A very uh, loyal uh, canine had a very strong drive. Um, uh, the 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 team. Uh, were uh, res uh, responsible for over 460 arrests, uh, nearly 500 vehicle searches, 
I had 23 successful tracks. The canine was a dual purpose uh, uh, canine narcotics and tracking. Uh, very talented, uh, very talented uh, police dog. Um, they were uh, responsible for the arrest of a uh, wanted subject uh, for armed robbery for the FBI and um, was able to effect the arrest of three burglary suspects on, on a track. Um, after retirement, uh, canine uh, Farrow went to live with uh, Jared Jordan, which is customarily what happens a lot of times uh, when uh, police uh, service dogs um, retire. They, they go to live with their handlers and uh, are just as loyal to you men as, as, uh, as they are when they serve the community. Um, I want to read something real quick. It's, a, it's called the Police Canine Oath. And this right here kind of put uh, everything in perspective about how important uh, canines are to the, the field of law, the profession of law enforcement and also uh, uh, the profession of, the, uh, of, of fire. Um, the Police Canine Oath is, I will lay down my life for you and expect nothing but love in return. I protect my officer with my life and would gladly take a bullet in his place. I am sent in to find lost children and fugitives on the run. I'll find drugs and weapons and even bombs. I'm the first sent in and sometimes the last to leave. I am the nose and ears of my officer. I will protect and serve him. I will die for him and for you. All I ask is for compassion and a kind word. Congratulations. Thank you, Chief. We also have here uh, a representative from the Cherokee Tea Party Patriots who wanted to make a presentation of thanks to our uh, 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 law enforcement department. Conrad? Thank you. Okay, uh, next item. Do we have any public announcements at this time? Mr. We've Brent? got First Friday tomorrow night. Uh, downtown will not have the streets closed. They're uh, going to have the vendors just be the restaurants, and the theme is beer garden. They'll be uh, get a ticket stamped at the restaurants, and there'll be a drawing. 6 to 9 p.m., a band in the gazebo. Anything else? Anyone have any other announcements? Okay, well, thank you. At this time, I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Do we? Any, are there any changes, corrections, or additions to it? Mr. Rust? No, I was just putting my eyes on the oh, door. Okay. Okay. So move. I have a motion to approve second. and a second. Uh, any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. All right. Also in your agenda package, you have the uh, minutes from February the 18th special call meeting as well as the uh, February 18th council meeting. Are there any uh, additions, corrections to those minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes as presented. So moved. Second. Okay, we have uh, Mr. Russ making the motion. Uh, Mr. Goodwin second with that. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. You have in your agenda package the financials there uh, for January. Uh, these are there for informational purposes only. If you have any questions, we have someone who can answer them tonight. Anyone have any questions regarding those financials? Okay. 
moving along. Now we'll go into our 10 minute public input period. We have two individuals, uh, uh, Candace Walker Bundy. Oh, oh, you got both of you at the same time? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and Bill Magruder. Canton Magazine. Canton Tourism is very pleased with their presentation, but we asked them if they would come tonight and give you a little overview of what the plan would be. Uh, as I say, Canton Tourism would like for your approval, also probably some financial assistance. So I'll turn it over to them. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening, Mayor and Council. It's nice to see you all tonight. I'm Candace Walker Bunda. I'm Rob Walker Bunda. I love you. And uh, we're here representing Bunker Design Collaborative. Uh, we have met two times now with Canton Tourism uh, in conversation about a promotional publication <coughs> for the city of Canton. Um, we are interested in a publication that highlights the city, its development, its going on, um, the history of the city, uh, its businesses, and also, I think most importantly, its people. Um, this would be an annual publication, um, and it would be a promotional piece, again, like we said, for the city of Canton. Um, we're excited about the possibility of doing this, and we just wanted to kind of give you all an overview of our thoughts on this and uh, let you know that in the upcoming weeks, possibly at the next council meeting, we would like to give a more of a, a small visual presentation of what our thoughts are on this. Good. Do you have anything to add to that? I'll tell us first. You'll tell us first. Okay. <laughs> now, would this, would this be information supplied to, uh, uh, to you or from the Canton Tourism or from the city or, I mean, I mean, I guess, who's the reporters? Um, what we would do is have someone on staff to do the interviews and then the article process. Okay. Uh, also, a photographer on staff. I think a big component of this magazine would be really nice editorial photography, primarily in highlighting some of the people of Canton. Um, okay. I think for that reason, too, um, our hope is to have at least some of the content provided by contributing editors as well, so people come to Oshawa City and have things that they are sure. familiar with or experts in. But we would certainly be the ones that would be organizing all of that. Um, so I think certainly having your all's blessing and backing on this is, is would be very beneficial for us with this magazine, but we would be producing all the content. But the hope is to sort of get the ball rolling now so we have a full year of documenting all the going-ons in the city, all the First Fridays and events like that, the Arts Festival, so we have all this beautiful photography and coverage that can go into it and start to highlight these things year to year. And then the intent would be to uh, produce the publication and have it printed by March 1st of 2017. As we go into the next First Friday and Spring Summer season. Now, what's there a uh, cost estimate? At it, this point? There is a cost estimate at this point. And uh, I can provide that documentation to you guys. I don't have it with Oh, okay. Now. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But I can certainly answer any questions that you have about that. But there okay. is a cost estimate. Okay. Anyone, anyone else? Uh, Ms. McGrew? This sounds like a great thing to do. It certainly would be great publicity for the city and good tourism tool. I know that tourism gives um, money, uh, an article to the Chamber of Commerce magazine. Would this be in lieu of or in addition to? Um, I believe it would be in addition to. Um, we haven't actually talked through all of the, those details, but I do feel like it would be in addition to. Thank you. Would there be ads in this? There would be ads in this, and we would also be responsible for uh, 
obtaining those ads and doing the ad sales for the magazine. And our thought at this point is that 50% of the funding of the magazine will be coming from ad sales, and then the other 50% hopefully um, from tourism and then potentially someone else, the city of Canton, um, or other right. people, other people who have a vested interest in the magazine. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Rusk. Hi, Candace. I have some questions, but you're coming back to us with more of a formal proposal in the next That's few right. weeks or two weeks from now? I'd, r I'd rather just hold my questions until we see what you got in mind, and then we can okay. start to think more concretely. Thank you. And just one more thing. I think the idea is for this to be a very high-quality material and, and uh, publication, um, not kind of a smaller local, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think that we're looking at this as a very high standard and high quality magazine, um, a really nice representation of the city of Canton. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. We'll look forward to the, when, when you're coming back, next meeting or the next month? When? We'll have us next meeting, which yeah. we'd like to. Yeah. Oh, okay. 16th, 15th, 15th? 17th. 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 Yes. 17th. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Under old business, we have an update on the progress of Northwest Canton Fire Station. Uh, Council Member Grant. Yes, the Fire Services Committee met yesterday, March 2nd, to get an update on the revised plans and schedule for the Northwest Canton Fire Station from the architect. Gary Watkins and Chief Floyd. The proposed design includes approximately 8,500 square feet. Um, just for reference, the uh, two new county stations are 11,000 square feet. So we're hoping that the smaller size of the Northwest Canton Fire Station will equate, equate to some cost savings over the recent county ones. The rise plans include replacing the two drive-through bays with back-end bays due to some site issues but the original functionality of the station design remains intact. The station will feature brick, stucco, and hardy board shake shingles on the exterior to blend in the surrounding community uh, at Laurel Canyon and Soleil, great sky. In addition, the construction materials and methods are of the highest quality to ensure longevity of the station and to maximize energy efficiency. The city, city recently completed more core borings and updated the site survey. And the updated site survey indicates the orientation of the new station may be slightly altered to avoid any additional alterations or changes to the site. <coughs> Final construction plans um, should be completed hopefully in the next uh, few weeks. And we hope to advertise the bid sooner th soon thereafter. Final bid should be received around the beginning of June. And the revised schedule should allow us to make up uh, 30 to 45 days in the process and advance to completion, uh, uh, completion date later this year, so late this year. So everything's on track. The, the new drawings look great. The, the final, I think, construction plans and drawings will be done, I think, in, said in the next two weeks to present right. to council. So uh, we're, we're on schedule and hopefully are going to be a little ahead of schedule uh, going in and coming out of the bid process. Thank you. Um, Bill, uh, when we when we hit last had a meeting about this, I th I'm not sure if it was an executive session or whatever, but there was a concern about borings and, and the rock bedrock that had to be hit to put the station where they wanted to put it. Are they good with that bedrock boring? Did they hit what they wanted to hit? Or yes, do the they have to alter it again. No, the borings came back satisfactory, and again, um, with a slide orientation. Because uh, because of the bedrock, the, because of bedrock. Uh, no, I think the bedrocks was fine. The corings were, were samples were fine. Uh, orientation of the slide is being altered just a few degrees, so there's no additional work to the slope behind behind okay. the station. So. Thank, you, thank you. Thank but you. But we're I think we're in good shape. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Item B: Discussion of the old ball ground sanitary sewer replacement project bids. Mr. Peppers. Mr. Mayor and Council, um, as you are aware, we had a project out to bid for a new 
sanitary sewer line uh, that is known as the old ball ground line. Um, it's approximately 6,800 feet um, of uh, sanitary sewer gravity pipe, 800 feet of sanitary sewer force main, and 1,000 feet of water line associated with that project. Uh, we received six bids, uh, the high bid being $4.1 million and the low bid from CAM contracting, uh, CAM contracting Southeast of 3.2 million on the project. Uh, the original budget uh, for that project last year was about $2.6 million. Uh, the cost uh, of that project going up because of the cost of materials, not so much the cost of labor. A couple of notes on that. Uh, when the project was originally bid out, based on the fact that we thought the project would be under $3 million, it was bid out using um, a, a, a bid uh, document that meets state requirements as it relates to financing. If we were to go after GFA funding, we follow a different set of requirements than if we were going after federal uh, uh, financing. Um, with a project coming in just over $3 million, $3 million is the cap for GFA financing. Um, so if we wanted to do federal financing, we would have to go back and change some things in the bid document and that would alter the price uh, because we would be following Davis-Bacon. Um, at this time, uh, we're at a cash position that if we wanted to pay cash for the project, we could. It would, it would definitely hit into our, our cash position on water and sewer, um, but we would be able at the very least to pay a significant amount of cash so that we could stay under the state funding if we did decide to go after a GFA loan. Um, the way the project is set up, uh, the project has 270 days to complete uh, once the contract is signed. Uh, there's a liquidated damages uh, for any day past 270 days that we have to go. I think Bobby's reviewing, uh, reviewing the contracts now on that. Uh, the company feels uh, that if they can get it, the, the bid awarded to them, that they could start before the end of the month, 1st of April, on the project. Um, their hope is to get about 40 feet done a day. Um, because of the nature of the work, there's not going to be very much subcontracting. Uh, it'll be done pretty much by, by the contractor themselves. Uh, we have worked with the contractor before. Uh, they have, uh, they've done work with the city as it related to um, to our lift station at Pea Ridge that we just had done. They also did some work for us on Marietta Road. As we were doing our streetscaping there, they did the replacement of the water line in that area. So we do have a history with the company. Anyone any have any questions about that? Ms. LaRue? If we were to get the GFA loan, how much is that interest right now? The GFA loan financing is an, just a hair over 3%. The federal financing is just a hair over 2%. Uh, the difference being that if we go with the federal financing, we have to go with the Davis-Bacon wage limits that are placed in there, uh, which could drive the cost of the project up. So you may not see any benefit from the percentage point. And we need to vote on this next time? Okay. And one, one comment that I would make too on this is Originally, if you'll recall, when we brought the, the P Ridge lift station issue up to you uh, late last year, that was an emergency item where we had the, the, the issue with the pump with that lift station. We spent about $480,000 on that project. We spent that money, uh, we paid for that project thinking, depending on what this project came in on, we might roll it into our GFA financing. Um, but the project's already paid for. Uh, and it wouldn't make much sense now, given the price of this project, to try to roll it in. So we would not be looking to finance that project anymore, and that's already accounted for in our in our financials that you saw for January. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Grant? Yes. Uh, does this include, or this is above and beyond um, the work we did there at the new Quick Trip? It is above and beyond. We spent about 140000 on the quick trip section of the line. Okay. And was that funded out of the cash position? We've already Not paid for that. Yes, okay. Sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. You want to move into the uh, easement for Georgia Power as a result of this project? Uh, you'll, see, you'll see an encroachment agreement with Georgia Power that relates to uh, some area that we'll have to get into as it relates to this project. Uh, this is a 
kind of a standard agreement that we have with them. We, we, we will have other agreements that may pop up uh, related to the project that we'll have to bring before you as well. But we want to go ahead and knock them out as soon as we can. Okay. Anyone have any question about that? That's just something we have to do. Okay. All right. Let's see. Discussion of the financing of the old ball ground sewer replacement project. Didn't we just sort of do that? We did sort of just do I think that. We, I think we've already talked about that on this. So, um, and, and Nathan Nathan will be at, uh, available next week. He's out of town this week, but he'll be available next week. And, and he and I will send out to each of you and, and ahead of the agenda to attach in the agenda a statement on how we might take care of this project, whether we decide we do want to go ahead and pay for all of it, we want to pay for a portion of it and finance the other portion, or we want to finance as much as we possibly can on it and give you those options. Okay, thank you. All right, city manager report. Oh, I'm sorry, we got one other, don't we? Yeah, we got the, oh, you gonna ask a question? Oh, on which one? Oh, for Ken, okay, discussion of the, this uh, ordinance that we just held a public hearing on earlier tonight, uh, noise ordinance. Go ahead and ask a question. Uh, Ken, my question was simple. I, I, it looks like we're just changing the hours and defining what hours we'd like people to use caution beyond that time and using. In, in we are any. changing the hours uh, plus uh, we are adding a, a fee for working outside of those uh, acceptable construction work hours. Plus we're also adding that notification to residential zones and occupied residences that w currently is not in place with our uh, construction hours uh, section under uh, nuisances and noise. Part of this was in response to the problems we had with the hospital part of it. That was I'm not sure that the, it was 100% because of that. It was a leading factor. There have been uh, numerous uh, proposals that have come before city council in the last few years relative to uh, working outside of uh, the approved construction hours and city council asked us to uh, look into some uh, potential changes to the regulations and bring it forth to city council for y'all's consideration. We have never had uh, fees for after hours work before? No, sir. So this is new? Yes, the sir. purpose of the fees is to discourage people from asking in the first place. If Correct. they have to, they can do we, it. We looked at between 40 and 50 other uh, local governments from across the country, Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, Tennessee, Louisiana, Texas, Minnesota, Colorado, and uh, there were quite a few of those that did have a fee uh, in place. <coughs> the proposed fee that uh, is included with this amendment is sort of an average of all of the fees that we saw within, uh, we looked at between 40 and 50 different uh, regulations of uh, part of putting something together to bring to city council. Now the last and most important question is, a few weeks ago we came and you asked us for permission to work on a weekend on our bridge. What do we do as a city when we want to work on the weekend? Does, it, does that come up before the council? Obviously, we're not going to fine ourselves, go out of one pocket and into the other. From so, a, go ahead. Uh, from a purely technical standpoint, uh, from a constitutional standpoint, local governments are exempted from uh, complying with their own regulations. This goes all the way back to uh, court rulings uh, and opinions back into the 1800s. But uh, the city, uh, as uh, Mr. Hatabian did with uh, that project, uh, did come before city council because it was a private contractor that was doing that work. So we, we did that on behalf of the private contractor. So the, because it's a city contract, does that mean the, the burden falls on us to do anything or the contractor to do something? Well, in particular to that project, it's a little bit different because the private contractor was not going to earn any more or less money based on how quickly they could get the project done. Oh. We chose to do outside of normal hours and on a weekend uh, because it was the best 
time scenario to get the project done in one, in one snapshot of time that had the least amount of impact on public safety. Convenience Whereas if to you're the dealing city. with a private contractor, they may be dealing with different times to try to make money or try to save money. In that instance, we were trying to protect public safety. So there's it, a difference. It, it there. seems like there are certain provisions of the new code that we should, we as a city should also do, which is notifying the people within 500 feet that we're going to do this, and two, come before the council as a requirement. And, and we do. I mean, any time we're going to shut down a road, we do that. We notify them through our code oh, red okay. system. So we, we notify them on our website. We notify them in our public okay. meetings and through our minutes. We do put we don't, signs We don't want to exempt way. ourselves from something that's important to the residents. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I? Uh, go ahead. On the fee, <laughs> I want to be clear on one thing. The fee is not based on the desire to keep people from asking for the permit since the law only allows us to charge a fee to recoup our administrative cost. So the, pe the fee would be set on the estimate of how much it would cost us to oversee people working after hours and to process that application. Yeah. I know Mr. Patton knew that. I just want to. Thanks for making that clear. <laughs> no, I, you know, I sort of got a couple of comments here, and one of which is the problem we're solving to me is not about the time an activity takes place. It's more about the activity itself and the noise level that it generates. Um, I mean, I don't know how, how you do that exactly. So I don't, you know, Saturday's fine with me, whatever. I mean, you know, as far as that goes. Uh, but, you know, if the holidays, another thing, I, I don't, the city can decide what holidays we wish to take, but I don't believe we ought to be telling private citizens of our city which holidays they have to take. I don't believe that we should tell a contractor that he can't go to work on the Friday after Thanksgiving or Christmas Eve. I mean, it'd be nice if everybody could just take a whole week off or whatever and, and do nothing. But to me, I, I, I'm not sure that would be, it's appropriate for us to tell them what holidays actually to take. But that's just my thoughts. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Yes, oh, sir. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you don't have to. I got you now. <laughs> that worked it. Okay. It's working. You were talking about the holidays. Yes. The day before Christmas, and I think it's isn't it listed the holidays that they're not allowed to work, and and it's only the prescribed holidays like Christmas Day and New Year's Day. It's not not, not this not in this. Uh -uh. This is the official list of uh, City of Canton observed I'm holidays. looking at the after hours work permit application that they come to us and they have to pay the fee. I'm not looking at the other one. I guess that's the one that you're talking about, Mayor. The well, one that's Christmas yeah, I was Eve. looking at the yeah. actual wording of this thing. Right. It says you construction work's not allowed on Sundays or holidays, and then it proceeds to list the holidays. But if they come for a permit to do work that's not that's not emergency work or work that they have to do, those holidays are are just the prescribed holidays. So we're talking about two different things. Well, uh, and I and I agree with the mayor. I think the holidays should be the same. That's that's my point. City Council can, uh, this is sort of like a first reading on this ordinance <laughs> yeah. amendment. Any yeah, changes that City Council <laughs> wants to make, any of uh, the uh, Canton holiday dates that you would wish to delete, uh, that w they could work without having to come before Council with the uh, extra hours or after hours uh, construction permit process is uh, certainly uh, up to the council. The, the idea to me is you don't want to bother people. Okay, you don't want to disrupt the peace and quiet of the neighborhoods and so forth like that. But if I want to go out and I want to work on Labor Day, and I'm not going to bother anybody, I don't know why I shouldn't be able to do it. I, I think one of the reasons why 
in this first draft, we've placed the city holidays in there, is the fact that if, if there is a need for city employees to go out and do an inspection on that day, it is a day that the city has already set as a holiday for that employee. So we're gonna have to call somebody in to do an inspection. Now, if that's the wishes of the council, that's fine. We just, we, when we first took a shot at what, what days we were gonna have listed in here, it was easier to go with what the city already considers a holiday, and then we can weed that down if that's the desire of the town. A contractor doesn't call the city on Sunday for an inspection, right? Some contractors That's, beca uh, that's because they're closed. If the city's closed on the day before Christmas, the contractor's gotta wait till the city's and open to call them for an inspection. And technically, if there's an emergency, we're gonna send somebody out anyway. Well, yeah, if it's an emergency, sure. And the city does have a, ded a dedicated uh, telephone number uh, for contractors to call to uh, get uh, inspections scheduled. We do uh, require a notification like a building inspection. They have to call that in uh, 24 hours in advance prior to getting that inspection so that we can work our scheduling out and things of that nature. And a lot of the builders, contractors, might will call in on a Sunday or a Saturday knowing that they need a certain inspection on a Monday or that sort of thing. I'd just like to see it be consistent with the holidays and the, the, and what, the one that they have to get a permit for and so yes, that those holidays are consistent. <coughs> Mr. Russ, go ahead. I, I just have one more thought. Um, I, I noticed that on the, in the after hours work permit application, it says, does any of the work include the following five items, which are pretty noisy. The only one, part of the reason why we did that is because the dump, dump trucks were making all kinds of flapping noise, metal to metal. Now what happens in that case, that's not listed certainly, but it's one of the things we're trying to protect against and cause people to have to get a permit to make those kind of noises. But w on the other end of the extreme, what if someone absolutely can prove it, we're not going to do any, we're going to do inside work in the hospital, whatever. The trucks will drive in just like a car would drive in, park and go to work. Could they exempt themselves from those fees because they'll say, we're not going to create any noise. We're going to work, but we're not going to create any noise. They could come to council and request that. I mean, a, a waiver of the fees because there's no noise. The ultimate group that can waive any fee or permit. Because there's no noise. I mean, the objective is to stop noise. There if there's are, no noise, go ahead. There are okay. some contractor uh, equipment that uh, is used uh, indoors that can be heard I mean. five, 600 feet away. But if someone could prove there isn't gonna be any noise, then they, certainly the burden on them would be to prove that there is no noise, and if they exempt it, then they got a problem if they do create <coughs> noise. But I, I'm just looking at two extremes loud noise that's not listed and then no noise that's not listed also and that maybe it should be an exemption. And anybody that's gonna make noise or expect to make noise, they're gonna have to get this application filled out and pay the fee. But we might wanna consider that. And if, if we can get, allow somebody to come and ask for a waiver, that's, that's always the case, I think. True? Always. Okay, thank you. I, I just noticed what Ms. Wilson was talking about there on the application. The application holidays right. are different than on the, to, than the ordinance. I've okay. got to make that amendment. Okay. All right. Anyone else have any comments? All right. City manager's report. A few things for you tonight. First, uh, first is a public information item. Um, as you're aware, we maintain a school zone on Reservoir Drive uh, at Teasley Middle School. And currently the signs are posted in that school zone for 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. It actually sits outside just barely the hours of the school operation. So uh, effective tomorrow, uh, Public Works will be changing the sign, the placard that has the actual hours. Uh, and starting on Monday, the hours will read 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. We will be uh, we will be watching that over the next month 
uh, and the, the principal at, at Teasley will be getting with the parents and the PTA and public announcements as well. Uh, but we'll give a period of time of warnings during that time before we start actively uh, writing any tickets. But it doesn't help to have a school zone if school is actually already starting before the time of, of, of the sign. So that one change will be going into effect. Um, one. Thirty-five, except for the times during that during that school zone. Correct. Um, another item that I have before you, uh, and I think I emailed each of you about this. Uh, we will have on the agenda at the March seventeenth meeting a budget amendment, which is a wrap-up amendment for the last budget year, uh, where basically we have to make a couple of changes uh, following. Uh, the cursory review of our auditors to make sure a couple of our accounts are in line. Uh, and so I'll be bringing that to you at the next meeting. We'll need to get that a approved at the next meeting. Um, we, have, um, we have received a contract um, that I would like to ask some action on from council tonight um, from uh, 20th Century Fox. Uh, they would like to utilize our two properties that we acquired from the Board of Education for filming uh, in the next couple of weeks of this month. Um, we just received the contract today. We went through a revision with, with Bobby and were able to get our terms added to the contract, um, but we need to take some quick action on it to have that done. There's two things that they've asked us for. The first thing is to be able to use the facilities and they'll pay us $2,500 for the filming for that. And then the second thing is, is a little bit of a strange request that they have of us. Uh, the movie that they are shooting is of a 60s era film, and there are some particular light fixtures within the mill office that they would like to lease from us during the next two months uh, uh, to be able to use at other sites because they can't find any just like them. Um, and so they would lease them for that period of time and they would insure them for that period of time um, and, and we would come up with a lease rate to give to them for that. Um, but again, you know, it was not in time for the agenda. I would ask the council to consider adding this to the agenda tonight so that we can get this done. This this is not exactly a life or death emergency, but it's a t there's a time frame there that, that I think would, would qualify and, and, and it's not anything that uh, we probably shouldn't go ahead and go ahead and deal with tonight uh, because of the time frame that they're going to start filming and everything, which is well bu before our next uh, meeting. Correct. So, um, Ms. McGrew? Will the filming company reinstall the light fixtures when they're finished with them? They will. They will, they will disassemble them. Uh, they will be insured during the entire time that they have them, and then they will reinstall them. Thank you. The Anyone else? Mr. Russ? I have uh, two things and, and then a comment. Is it $2,500 for as many days as they use it or per day? It's $2,500 for a period of time, the period of time being from March 7th to March 24th. Um, if they need it after March 24th, they'll pay us an additional $1,000. For that whole time period? Yes. They got off cheap. Second question is, is it, just look at your paperwork there, is it 20th century or 21st century? 20th century Fox. Really? I thought yeah. they changed their name, but maybe they changed their corporate name uh, and not the, and, 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 here, and, let me give you a personal experience. I had 70 people in a home I owned one time filming and they take every everything out. They, they have metal detectors, they go around and get staples out, everything out, they're, they're wonderful, so. I wouldn't worry about that part. Replacing things exactly the way they were before. They take pictures to make sure that they, it's and perfect. And I would just mention that the fee that's associated with this is the same fee that the founder paid when they utilized space in them. It's not much. But it gains a few folks coming in town, see what's going on. Oh, yeah. We get a little notoriety out of it, you know. That's I mean, good. Yeah. It's good for the city. It's yes, good sir. for the city. Thank you. Mr. Grant. Did you have something? Yeah, I'd, li I'd just like to make a motion to go ahead and approve the contract for 20th Century Fox. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Thank All you. Right. 
Um, the last thing I wanted to bring before your attention um, is that, um, well, two, two things as it relates to the Environmental Protection Division of the state. First is that uh, they have um, they have agreed to give us 8 million gallons of capacity on our wastewater allocation. We just got that this week, yesterday. Uh, in addition, they did their sanitary survey of our water treatment plant, uh, which is done every three years. Uh, and that's where they inspect the facility. They, ins they, they talk with our staff. They look at our equipment. They do kind of a, a, a white glove check, if, if you will. Um, we scored a 93.4 on that. And, and where that is significant is that back in 1999, we were about at a 60, we were in the high 60s. So we've seen some great improvements in our, in our efforts down there at the water treatment plant, which I think is a great credit to utility partners that, uh, that, that operates that plant for us. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. Okay. Anything else? I have a question for Mr. Oh, Rogers. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Cherokee High School, Hasty Elementary, and Canton Elementary have flashing signs when the speed limit is reduced. Why doesn't Teasley have that? Whose responsibility is it to have a flashing sign for reduced speed limit times? We can look into it. Thank you. The other t the other schools are on state routes, right? But and that may be the reason. So I would suspect it's, it would be up to us probably yeah, to us. do that. Correct. But that is yeah. something that we can look at. And and I think I think part of it too was the fact that there was always a potential for development across the street from Teasley and the, and the thought was that there would be a traffic signal there and that would naturally slow down. But since there's not one there, I think we can look at those those as well. It's a natural speedway. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, if not, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss real estate disposition. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. We will not be coming back to coming back out to for any votes or anything.